Good morning, everybody. It's a lovely 34 degree morning out here. We are starting another deck job. So you can see the current state of the deck. We are about to start demoing on this Monday morning. And I'll show you later on uh, some, some of the plans and what it's gonna look like uh, going forward. But for now, we're just gonna start tearing it apart. And we've got a lot of stuff to unload and a lot of materials to get sorted and organized. And we're gonna get after it. Okay, we got the bulk of the demo done. The, uh, the old landing and stairs are all down and out of the way. And then uh, you can't quite see it from down here, but I got a little ahead of myself up there. I, uh, I neglected to properly go over the scope of work and make sure, I knew we were leaving the joists on this original deck section, but I completely missed the fact that we were supposed to be leaving the deck boards so i started cutting up the deck boards when i was made aware that they were not being replaced so i'm not uh i don't want to be out here hiding my mistakes and making it look like we always do everything right the first time so full transparency i i messed up on this one so we're gonna be doing some new decking on this deck and uh trying to be better next time but aside from that additional deck board demo, we are ready to start digging footings. And the basic quick game plan here is that the current deck is gonna become, we're gonna build a screen porch over it, and then we're adding a deck out here. So we've got a, I've gotta map out some footing holes out here, but then we're also making under each of these for six by sixes, which are rated to hold the weight of the current deck, but we've got to bulk them up. So we're gonna be digging under each post and pouring new larger footings to support the weight of the additional structure that we're building on top of it. And if you've seen, I think at least in one, one video I've done, we did a home renovation a couple years ago and we did, anytime we're taking out a load bearing wall, we have to support the, you know, whatever's above it with a temporary beam and metal column setup. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna set up a temporary, create a temporary wall essentially to hold the weight of this deck because we're gonna completely dig out underneath of each of these four six by six posts. And then they're gonna be suspended more or less, while well, they will be suspended, and then we're gonna be pouring a new concrete footing under each post. And it'll also give us the chance to properly level this structure because if you can see, it's sagging a little bit at this corner. So we'll actually be able to raise this entire structure up on this corner and get it perfectly level so that when we pour the concrete and it cures and then we remove our temporary wall, it'll be perfect. next morning so we had uh we had help from a couple other guys later in the afternoon so we got all of our holes dug so these three out here are for the beam that we we're putting in that holds the end of the deck that's out here and then these two right here are for the landing and we actually ended up finding out that these ones are freaking huge that's 
if you, you hopefully you can see it down there okay that is a poured concrete footing that is 36 inches below grade and we checked it with this breaker bar we were able to feel down there it's at least a foot thick so our hope is that now that we've exposed that and we can show that this this current footer is actually bigger than the one we need that the inspector will allow us to not have to dig down that far and do anything extra with these because it's deep and this is freaking mucky mud so it was not easy to dig all that my guy owen did the bulk of that yesterday i got it started but he he did most of it and we actually got some ipads yesterday which is pretty freaking sweet because it allows us to look at plans like this in a much larger much larger area and zoom in and stuff but this is what we're this is our final look that we're going for right here so step back so you can see this right here is of course the existing you know sunroom that's attached to the house and we are extending that's the side view right there the existing deck right there is going to become that screen porch and then we're extending the deck out with the landing and the stairs coming down off the front right here instead of going down the side like that like they were before so it should be a it should be a pretty cool project and it's super nice having that ipad to be able to not drain my phone battery all day without trying to look at planes and stuff in the sunlight and uh yeah it's pretty awesome but uh we're waiting on i'm working on calculating uh stairs because we're having there's basically the landing or you know the main deck right here and then it's a step down to the landing and then our set of stairs coming down you know right here in this space so i got a lot of math to do to figure all that out and i'm working on that um we're also going to, I picked up new uh, treated wood decking to replace all of the decking that I jacked up yesterday. The other the other two uh, folks that came and helped us yesterday pulled off all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, that's how, much, that's how much decking we're replacing because I uh, messed up. So, you know, make sure you know what you're doing before you just start working. <laughs> I'll hopefully learn that lesson going forward. All right, so this is the landing, which Owen just assembled. We just went ahead and assembled it all in one big piece, and we'll carry it over there in a minute. We've got the post cut to height and notched, and then we actually have to also space off the house here because where this post is, it's a little bit farther out than the house is right here, about an inch, so it worked out pretty well. We were able to reuse a couple old deck boards. And that way the ledger for that surface will attach here nicely and then we'll put a beam together and set it in these posts and they'll get set down in the holes and then we'll just set the landing framing up on top of it the top of this structure and get it level and then shoot the nail on this like more on this side.
Okay, end of day two, and we have made some decent progress. One of our team members, uh, Emma, got most of the new decking put back on. So it's not totally completed, but she got the bulk of it on. And we'll of course come back and cut all these off again later, like we do for normal decks, like composite decks. If you've seen any of our any of our previous ones. And myself and Owen got started on the stairs. You saw the landing go up. We got it squared off, installed, and then Owen cut all the stringers. And we had just gotten to this point of having the this front board put on, post attached, plumbed, leveled, all that good stuff. When I got a call from my brother that we got, uh, we had a revision on our footing hole sizes uh, that we were going to be needing to do. We actually need to do, we need to pour a bigger footing on this middle one that's out here on the end. But then the really sucky part was that instead of these being able to be 18 by 18 by 8 inches thick, which I think I mentioned yesterday, they need to be 26 by 26 by 8 inches thick. So Owen and myself just spent the last two hours digging this crap out. And it is, picture probably doesn't do it justice. It was a lot of dirt uh, to move. But hopefully the good thing that we discovered is it seems like this entire section is one continuous footing because we can take our big breaker bar and we can shove it down in to the side of the hole, like especially on this one here that's a little bit bigger. We can hit concrete. If you can actually see that hole right there, that's from Owen jamming that breaker bar in and he's hitting concrete like two feet away from the side of this post which means they're still footing going that way and I can do the same thing in the other hole. Which would make a lot of sense if they just dug and poured those footings when they built the house. The house isn't that old and was built in 2008. And so they already knew they were gonna put a deck here, didn't know exactly where posts were gonna be while they've got the excavator out here digging for footings for the actual house. They can just dig and pour super easily and quickly for the deck that was gonna be here. So that is likely what they did, and we're hopeful that the inspector will actually allow that's stronger than the footings that we would have been doing because it's one continuous footing. It's probably got rebar in it and things like that. So hopefully we won't actually have to pour anymore. We'll just, we spent two hours to dig and expose, and now we'll just put all the dirt back, hopefully. If not, we'll have to pour. The holes are big enough. If we need to pour more concrete, we will, but hopefully not. Uh, so. We will be getting an inspection tomorrow on all that and we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to trying to kind of show most most of the steps. I'm not gonna slow down and take the time to explain how and why we do every little single thing we do, but trying to do trying to show a little bit more of some of the individual tasks that happen on this one than I did as opposed to the last one. And this is gonna be a pretty big one. And of course we've got the once we build the deck, we've got a whole screen porch to build over top of the existing deck. So got a lot to do here and We'll see you guys back tomorrow. So the way I'm able to set these myself, we start by attaching these angle brackets, these right angle brackets on the top of these stringers. And then I'm gonna set the top in, up the top of the stringer in place, with the bottom as well. It will drop down low. And you can see right now it's probably sitting about two to three inches low. And then I've started screws down here. So all I have to do is lift up on the entire stringer. And of course it's just holding itself in place at the top. I'm gonna make sure I'm flush down here at the bottom. Run the screw in. And the one down low as well. And now the bottom of my screw is in the right spot. And then I come up here with my joist hanger gun and lift the top up into place. And shoot it. 
So now that you saw how the stringers go up, I'll give you a quick rundown on how we how we do these stairs in order to meet code and also save time. So the way that we used to do the bottoms of our stair assemblies is pretty much like this, where just in case you can't see already, all we do on this very bottom, this very bottom tread right here, we just cut an inch and a half off of it so that we can attach this essentially a front band board to the bottom of the stringers for stability and then another purpose which we'll get to. But the way we used to do this is we would actually excavate a whole section right here and we would form and pour a four to five inch thick slab that the entire bottom of the stair assembly would rest on. So it would be, you know, in this case, these are five foot wide stairs. So it would be about a five and a half foot by hmm, 14 inch wide footing probably, which of course takes time. You've got to dig, it's extra digging to, you know, be able to pour, form and pour the concrete. Then you can't build on it right away. You got to wait it. I mean, we, we would always wait at least a day before we started putting weight on it, sometimes more depending on the temperature. So it just slows the whole process down. And about a year and a half or so ago, my helper, we were gonna do this and he was like, he had a history of, of framing and decks and stuff uh, before he came to work with us. And he was like, man, why don't you guys just do it this way? And we were like, yeah, that makes way more sense. So we're essentially framing this the same way we would everything else these posts will get bolted we haven't run them all the way in yet because we got to do some more blocking but we run in these through locks these fastened master through locks and they turn this this post and from a handrail post into an actual support post and we have our footing blocks down there and we haven't done them yet but we're going to put joist hangers that's another reason that's the other reason for this board is that we're going to put joist hangers right here that hold the bottom of the stringer so now all these intermediate stringers don't have to rest on anything other than the joist hangers that are sitting right there. Just like we have right here. Same exact, same exact concept. <clears throat> so it means that as soon as we're ready to frame stairs, all we gotta do is dig holes and drop footing blocks and start building like we are right now when we don't actually even <laughs> have a deck for it to tie into yet which is good because we're we're waiting on inspector hopefully he'll show up soon this morning and we'll be able to get all that stuff knocked out and continue with the rest of it but this gives us this gives us a whole day of work basically if for some reason he doesn't show up till later this afternoon we can just pretty much completely build this entire set of stairs while we're waiting to make progress and other stuff so that's how we do it it's a far better way in my opinion and faster and allows us to keep moving quickly all right, well it's only mid-morning, but we uh, we just got ourselves pretty well cleaned up because we've got this massive storm that's rolling towards us and it's going to hit in the next 20 minutes. But we did have our uh, in footing inspection, so we got this one poured and it's covered up and ready to go. And we got approval to leave these ones as they are, so we'll spend the next few minutes before we start getting poured on backfilling and... Hopefully come back tomorrow if the weather's better and keep rocking. Right, back out here Friday morning. Had some rain yesterday. There's a little bit of water in the bottom of some of these holes. That's the one that we poured concrete in. And that hole is exactly like those holes. Except for some reason it has way more water in it. <laughs> and our, of course our two large holes up here have a decent amount of water in them as well. But we started out by leveling this deck. So we can't really adjust where it's attached to the house and it's out of level anyway. But what we can do is we set our laser on that corner and then we just cut, we removed this outer band board here so that we could pull and or cut nails that was holding the beams to the posts. And then we used our temporary supports and lifted it up. So now you can see the gap in that space and this will actually move around because it's not touching anymore. And it's the same thing except it's even a little bit higher over here. So now we're gonna just put some composite shims in these spaces to lower the deck back down onto. And then we will have a nice level section across the front here to attach our new deck to. Thank you. 
float of overhang? Huh? Float yeah, of overhang. it should be pretty much that. Um, you just maintain control on your end. We should have marked it, but I'll just mark it. Yeah. So it's going to come my way about an inch. Okay, so beam is in place and bolted up. And then we also did flashing tape across the top of it. It's just this stuff right here called G-Tape. But this is just something we've started doing over the last few years uh, to help prevent any kind of organic material from getting down in between like this joint right here in between these two beams. That's a weak point. Uh, anybody who's ever pulled up a deck or seen, you know, stuff like that you know, years down the road, that'll be, that will be the point that starts failing. You get organic material, you know, leaves, debris, whatever, rain. It's just a place for things to get down in there and then compromise the integrity of the wood. So we prevent that by putting that flashing tape over top of it and keeps that from happening. Just one more little thing you can do to prolong your, the life of your product and just have a better install. All right, so we're gonna grade our joist real quick. We've done this a couple other ways in the past, but uh, we're gonna go the way that Dr. Dex off Instagram does it. So down there, the girder that we just put up is gonna be what our joist are sitting on on the one end. The end attached to the current deck, they're gonna just be hanging in joist hangers. We can control the height of them so it's a little bit less important. So we've got all these floor joists set up and you can see how off they are. So if we were to just set all those randomly on that girder, that's how bad all of those are gonna be. You're gonna see a lot of up and down in the deck. So we're going to kind of move around all these joists and get it where the level is sitting flat all across the tops of them instead of high on some and low on some. All right, so it's not a thousand percent perfect, but it's pretty dang good and a hell of a lot better than it was before. We are all wrapped up for the weekend. Made pretty good progress for only having like three and a half days of work on site this week. I made another mistake this morning, so we need to buy another board, the band board that goes across these end joists right here. So once we have that uh, next week, we'll be able to square up perfectly plumb and everything and get this beam nailed off or getting, you know, get the joist nailed off to the beam. Uh, they're already they are in joist hangers at that end though so they're good they're walkable and we also went ahead and backfilled those two big old giant holes up there so we have a little bit less dirt and hopefully it'll dry out a little bit over the weekend but yeah that's uh that's about it where we only were on site for three and a half days so pretty decent progress for the week so that'll be the end of this video i think i'm just gonna do uh weekly videos for it's about a three week two and a half three week project so just make it make it that short and easy three nice three videos three or four videos or how many it ends up being try to keep them from getting too terribly long so uh thank you guys for watching hopefully this has been a little bit different uh you know video than the the previous deck i'm trying to show more things instead of the the broad scope 
and uh, we got another pretty exciting one coming up after this one so we'll be lots of deck content coming your way but they're all they're gonna be unique and different so hopefully it won't get too repetitive and I'll do my best to keep it interesting and informative so let me know if you have comments uh, I'd love to answer them if you have any questions and thanks for watching see you guys on the next one